What's up guys, it's Eric here for something pretty interesting. This is a PvE VOD review. So usually when PvE comes around, I'm just like playing games, grinding games out. But I want to give you guys a VOD review today uh, just because, you know, you guys you guys love the VOD reviews. I know, I know you guys are crazy about the VOD reviews. The portal, by the way, is Bandal Cafeteria. I translated them before the game. Uh, so that is the one where you get uh, a spatula. And every time your unit with a spatula is next to... A, uh, another unit they give them extra permanent max HP um I'm gonna go silence my phone now because but honestly like isn't that better than it vibrating isn't that a pretty cute notification I also wanted to say we're still partnered with into the am of course uh link down in the description to their website so if you're looking for high quality uh tees shorts uh graphic tees hoodies any of that kind of stuff check out the link um, it would help me out a ton if you go there and if you buy products, I mean, it helps me out a ton, a ton. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to talk about Jazz Latte because he's had a pretty interesting approach to this patch, this, this PBE patch. You'll see he auto takes, um, the, uh, the Pandora's, uh, items. It's called Pandora's items, right? I, I never take this augment, so I'm literally like forgetting what it's called. He auto takes Pandora's items every single game and you'll, you'll see what he ends up forcing i mean it's in the youtube thumbnail so I'll, i guess i'll spoil it for myself even though we haven't actually seen it in the body view this man is forcing triple rfc nila every single game on pve i don't know if this can be a viable strategy come alive but i mean with how this unit looks with this setup i do think it's uh it's very plausible that if they don't change something about her, it might actually be broken come live. So if you want your super secret tech for live, uh, maybe this is it. Um, you can see already he's buffing up this uh, Nautilus. Nautilus is a juggernaut now. He's a bilge water juggernaut. So if you haven't been playing PB and also, wow, background music's kind of low. I, I went for the hi-fi today, which is a different playlist. So hopefully it's not too much for you guys. Uh, slams the Sunfire here, and I assume at this point he's going to be looking for bows. He's going to be looking to make a, uh, a Juggernaut emblem, um, and I mean, that's just, yeah. Uh, it's This comp actually seems pretty decent in Mantle Cafeteria, because you can get to make a Juggernaut emblem. I guess you could make Challenger... What, what is this? What is this? He just rerolls into Triple Sword. That's kind of hilarious. I guess you could make Challenger emblem, but what I've seen him play mostly is Vanquisher. There is a Vanquisher emblem, if I remember correctly. So maybe you make that... They added Bilgewater Emblem, which is Cloak. And did they add Vanquisher Emblem? I kind of feel like they did, but I'm trying to remember what they might have cut for it. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But, I mean, surely we're not making Bilgewater Emblem. I mean, he's looking... Because you have Neela and Nautilus in the comp. Um, so maybe you you could, I guess, make a Bilgewater Emblem. And that's sort of what he's looking at, trying to figure out, like, okay, is this worth it, maybe? Um, but I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I Like I said, I haven't... I mean, I, I didn't say this, but I haven't actually watched the entire VOD through. I just looked at the end, saw that he was playing this comp. I looked at a lot of his games and saw that he was just boom, 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 boom. TF play this comp every single game. Uh, and I, I thought it, it's got to be worth a VOD review, right? To show you guys. I mean, this is a pretty crazy uh, way of playing the game, especially because like, you know, TF was broken early on in the set or like, Honestly, not even broken. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he slams Juggernaut spat here, though he doesn't really have a unit to put it on. But, like, just guaranteeing it. Uh, yeah, the problem would be that you'd have to put it on, like, this Dolgi. This, um, I forget what you call this unit. Nefiri. Uh, and someone in, my, someone in my last video told me Nefiri is a girl. If that is wrong, uh, then let me know. But I'm just I'm just going to go with calling Nefiri a she. I mean, it's it's a fucking dog, you know? Like, Rek'Sai is a girl, and, you know, I do my best. But, I mean, it's, like, I, I don't know. I can't really... In any case, um... He doesn't actually go for the Juggernaut Emblem, which is pretty interesting. So he's just looking to, to get as many RFCs as possible. Also looks like he's really into the, the Nefiri RFC as an item holder, uh, which makes a decent amount of sense, right? And you see also this other person in his lobby, uh, Yuzu... Oh, okay, I couldn't... Fit. Yuzu Rin... Okay, that's a, that's a kind of a long name, actually. That's pretty difficult. In any case, this person is also taking Pandora's Bench, uh, or Pandora's Items, and doing the exact same thing as Jazz Latte going for that um oh now that i think about it that sunfire i, I think i was like doing a, a youtube intro or something but that sunfire didn't come off of uh he didn't slam sunfire right that was his full item reforged off pandora's and he said ah this is good enough right i, I imagine that's what happened there um but i guess you guys can tell me if i'm right or wrong the the fear you can't actually slam juggernaut emblem here because it's gonna pop off you i mean you can you just have to be really fast apm wise because it's gonna pop off of warwick um, so you have to be careful. Oh my god, the early Neela. That is that is a, a GG. Okay, so we, we can actually get to see this comp from like from like a perfect setup. Yeah, the whole lobby me up him because 
<laughs> everyone's going over and they're like what is this man you're hard forcing Nila and you're using natural anila but okay so this is great we can see this comp at maximum um power okay so the reason why rfc Nila, because you might be asking okay why is this so crazy because her auto attacks uh go in a cone and the cone actually gets extended so you see she goes whoosh, 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 every time she autos that cone gets extended by rapid fire cannon which is crazy he gets another one here so now we're gonna see two rfc i imagine um i guess it's like harm assist here because like i don't think the uh the healing orbs is actually that good just because she's actually not gonna be in range a lot of the time but you can see he's already playing his just four juggernaut plus two vanquisher board Wait, who's a Vanquisher? Oh, it's uh, Dari Darius is a, is a Vanquisher now. So you see this like fits in very easily. Gets Nefiri back in for Challenger and also for potentially the Darken bonus, which if you guys don't know, uh, Nefiri is a, a Darken unit now. Uh, well, not now because, you know, she, she didn't exist before. But um, when she dies, she gives a little buff to the unit closest to her. Same thing as Atrox, uh, where every time they cast, they do a little bit of physical damage to their target. Um, but yeah, as you can see in that fight, and I can talk through it more in the next one because I was sidetracked. But this this RFC Nila actually goes crazy, man. She actually just bonk, 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 bonk. Also, uh, Yuzu Rin Rinnery, Yuzu Rinnery, uh, the other player who's doing this tech is also going as many RFCs as possible, but they're doing it on Immortekaiser. Um, so pretty interesting. I'm curious about because I know they changed RFC uh, this uh, patch, right? Uh, in PBE, like when going into PBE, they said we're going to change RFC. It no longer gives, I mean, it, it never really gave you the, the ability to make your spells not miss recently because that hasn't been something that existed recently. Um, but the big thing is that they took out some of the attack speed, I believe, and gave it just flat damage increase. Uh, so it doesn't matter if uh, if it's on your autos or your abilities, it just gave you straight up damage increase, which I think maybe people like Jazz Latte have realized that that's like kind of broken if you stack a bunch of them and just get, I think it's like 12%, so you stack three, that's a 36% damage amp. Uh, maybe th those numbers are just a little bit overtuned or something. I'm not sure, but he's been spamming this all yesterday, all today. Uh, so I want to show you this, show this off to you guys. Like I always say with PB, and I mean, just look at this Nila go. I mean, she got like permacy seed there by something by Nila, but like, but uh, or but not by Nila, by Melio. But like Nila won with those items, just dealt like almost seven thousand damage, uh, and that was with her being permacy seed. So it seems like a pretty broken setup. I'm curious to see what he goes after uh, after this. Also, I'm curious because, you know, you could go for a Titans here. You could go for like a Gwinsu here, but he really just loves the triple RFC to extendo the range. But like you see Yuzu Inveri, Yuzu Rinnery. Uh, sorry, that's like this. I've never heard of this player before. Um, already has one RFC built, is looking to build that second RFC. But yeah, look, look at these units go with the RFC is 5.7k damage. And it's also, it's just so satisfying to watch, right? Or just slap, 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 slap. Boom, Nautilus 2 there is huge, and we have a finished triple RFC setup here. Uh, I believe the setup he tends to go for is, uh, oh, I'm actually not 100% sure. I think this game goes for 4 Jug, 4 Vanquisher, so maybe he does make a Vanquisher spat. Um, but I, I mean, I guess we we shall see. I, I think, obviously, like, this setup, 4 Jug, um, and then 2 Vanquisher is really solid. He is going to roll deep on 7 here, um, just to try to find, I would assume, the, uh, the Nila 2, since we have Nila paired up. We have not found it yet, though, which is a little bit rough. And I I think this might be one of those situations where he's afraid it's going to be quite contested. Um, looking to make Juggernaut spat here, it looks like. He also got the... He he got the uh, the 4 on the 4 in with no spat. So, yeah, like, this is like... Oh, you got to slam it or else it's going to reforge. Uh, and then he's going to save this chain as well. Interesting. For just a, a tank item, maybe. Um, these look amazing. Maybe you can just take the Unified Resistance just to make your board a little bit better. You don't really want... I don't imagine that you want uh, like portable here. Yeah, I think unified seems like it makes too much sense in this spot because you really just want to be buffing the Neil up as much. It's like a Neela hyper carry comp, right? Um, so yeah, so he makes a Juggernaut spot. So even without Juggernaut spot, you could play this board, which is oh, this is really cute. You get Ionia in with uh, with Set, Zaya, and Jin, and then um, you also get to keep in four Vanquisher with uh, Jin plus Zaya, who are Vanquisher units, plus the Darius, who's another Vanquisher unit. Uh, and then you set also fills out your Juggernaut units. And now we can just push 8, add... Do we have Nasus in already? We don't. So yeah, we can just push 8, add Nasus, have 6 Juggernaut here. Oh, but he does natural a, a GP here. So he's he's going to fit the GP in here for 3 Bilgewater and for just getting to play a GP over the set for now. I wonder what he plays on 8 now. Does he still want to go for the 6 Jug? Because 6 Jug is a big, big, big buff. So do we just cut the GP eventually? I, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, with the GP, the GP does crazy damage. 
even the bilge water the bilge water actually seems like it would go crazy here because she's proccing it on so many units every time she does the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. so it's like a it's just a i mean bilge water is damage amp for bilge water units that's how it works it's like how much damage they do the cannonball that comes down if you guys don't know like bilge water basically marks units for these cannonballs and then it's, it drops them after a few seconds and the damage from the cannonball is a percentage of the damage that the units did plus plus a flat amount um we get Nila 2 here. I mean, now we are absolutely cruising. But yeah, I'm really curious to see what his board ends up being. Looks like he, he was looking at the GP to potentially build items. So maybe we're just going to keep this GP. I mean, GP is a very strong unit. Um, but I also, I would feel bad turning down a 6 Juggernaut setup just because 6 Juggernaut seems like so much frontline for this Nila. Um, which, I mean, like all she really needs is time, right? To just hit everyone. She's like just a, a giga hyper carry. Um, you know, makes me think of it, you know, anything like a, like an Aphelios, uh in, in the previous set, though, Felio still exists. Um, also, uh, if you guys don't know what Zaya does, uh, she throws out all of her feathers. Um, she is an Ionia Vanquisher, and she has flat armor shred on her feathers, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah, he's actually, like you see, he puts the, the Zaya right next to the Nila because he wants, um, you know, the targets of Nila to be armor shredded by Zaya. And you can see when, he, when she throws all of her feathers out, it's kind of hard to see there because we're on two times speed, but she throws all of her feathers out and each one shreds flat armor. Zaya is another unit that actually really wants just a huge front line. I made the mistake the other day of playing Zaya with like pretty poor front line and it is not very good. She wants as much front line as possible because you want her to get to those multiple casts, right? You want her to cast, shred their armor, cast, hit them with their armor shred, deal more damage, and then cast like a third time with their super shred armor. Five plus dupe here, which is pretty interesting. Oh, I mean, that's another Nila. You could go for like Nila three. I assume he just wants tank items here. Goes for like a D-Claw plus something. He's going to go for Bow maybe for Renans, Titans. I'm not actually sure what he's going to go for here. Um. Okay, so yeah, yeah, he is going to make D-Claw. He just made the Bow for fun. Okay, so he just makes D-Claw for Emble, which makes a lot of sense. And he's actually, he's actually going to put those items on Nasus, even though he's actually not a better item carrier right now. And we're kind of splitting items between Nasus and... Um, and the Nautilus, uh, he he just wants to make sure these items are on the best carry possible, which is going to be Nasus. Or I guess, you know, he's not really a carry, but yeah. Eventually, once we find Nasus too, this will be stronger. The question is, can we go 9 from this position? Or do we have to roll? Because we're missing Nasus too, we're missing Zaya too. I mean, it looks like he's not very uh, interested in rolling right now. But I'm curious, once he gets to like 40, 50 gold, if he wants to roll for Nasus. Especially, I guess the main concern right now is we don't actually have these units paired. Uh, and we're pretty healthy, so it doesn't make sense to roll for them. But, like, say his next shop has a Nasus in it, is he looking to roll for a Nasus 2 in this spot? Or does he think, I mean, triple RFC, um, Nila is so broken that I, I don't even need to, uh, that I can just go fast 9 from this spot. Because, I mean, it's looking pretty broken, right? It is looking not bad at all. And, you know, he got to pick TF and just completely grief his entire early game, like, barely build any items, and just look for perfect items. So, oh, the other thing that I was going to say about this strategy is that, you know, TF was broken early set because people would make all the Zeeks and they would make like BIS Garen and stuff like that. And I think part of the reason why Riot removed the ability to craft these uh, support items like Zeeks, like Locket and stuff like that is because they saw how much of an issue it was with the unit like TF. But it's kind of funny that like still, even with those units no longer existing, uh, it's still kind of an issue here. Uh, I'm curious what he takes for Zai here because I'm tempted to take something like a, uh, a Nasher's Tooth on her, which if you guys don't know... Uh, trying to give you guys like the full rundown but uh if you guys don't know is a new item that um every time you cast you get attack speed so it's like a very solid uh just like item that you can uh put on like units that care about casting and care about uh having attack speed so like that's i i feel like it's a solid item on zaya because she you know she casts and then she autos a lot but yeah this is so funny this is the oh no this is a completely different player okay i thought it was um I thought it was Yuzu Rinnery, but it's actually uh, Koi. Koi has the exact same setup, except um, it's Triple RFC Mordekaiser. So it's the battle of the Triple RFCs this game. Triple RFC Mordekaiser and Triple RFC Nila. So I don't know. Is this is this the the tech from Taiwan? The Taiwanese tech that's uh, going to absolutely destroy live when it comes out? I mean, the nice thing is that we're early days on PvE. So if this turns out to be Giga Broken in the stats, then right, it'll just, you know, like nerf RFC and stuff. So... There's no ELO to be had right now, but I think this is a really fun tech, so you guys can try this out in your games, just because it seems really fun. And okay, so that setup, by the way, if you guys are curious, if you guys want to know, if I don't hit Nila and I hit Mordekaiser, what do I play? Looks like they're playing a 5 Noxus or Slayer version. Uh, they do have a Noxus spat and a Slayer spat, 
So normally it would be three Slayer and maybe we would drop something to get the five Noxus. But yeah, we're, we're getting Noxus in. Like the, these are like very crucial Noxus units. Um, and then he just has Swain in here as well. And this is Samira in the back line, which makes sense, right? You get Challenger in with um, with Fiora, which is really nice for her as well. He also has Demacia in, right? That's the Noxus Demacia board, which is kind of funny. Where he has Jarvan, Fiora, and Quinn in, which makes a lot of sense. Fiora, Quinn, um, you know, Fiora is a Challenger, Quinn is a Slayer. So you usually want Quinn when you're playing that kind of board. Uh, and then the Jarvan's just like a good unit. I guess he's also a strategist with Swain. So that board actually fits together really well with one spat. I'm curious what their board would be without one spat. Maybe you just drop down to three Noxus, but then you're losing like Challenger or you're losing like Strategist. It's kind of tough actually. Um, sadly, we've slammed this bow, so we kind of have to just take a Nasus item here. I mean, I don't hate Double Bramble in this spot. Yeah, I think Double Bramble makes the most sense. Oh, he's going to put on what a strange setup actually. He decided to itemize Nasus and then put the third Bramble on Nautilus. Maybe he thinks there's a lot of Nasus out of the pool, so he's like gonna be hard for him to hit. I didn't see that many though, and like the whole lobby's almost dead. As you can see, we are down to our final two RFC boards. Uh, he's gonna go nine here, get in the GP, which makes a lot of sense. He is gonna get Atrox in over the Warwick eventually, and he finds Nasus too. Um, so really great setup. At this point, he's just rolling to try to find uh, Zaya two and Gangplank two. So I mean, yeah, this makes sense as the board to me. Is there a better um? Yeah, you don't really want to cut any of the other Juggernauts, so it makes a lot of sense to just cut Warwick at this point. Uh, if you did not have Juggernaut spat, you could level just for the Juggernaut here um, to get 6 Jug in instead of the GP. But with Juggernaut spat, this I feel like feels really, really nice where you get to play uh, everything, basically. Boom, there's GP. Uh, oh, and he's going to sell Zaya so that he can move the Juggernaut spat and the GS over to GP. How smart, okay. That makes a ton of sense because this GP is going to be doing a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. And the Zaya, like, she matters, but she doesn't matter that much. I'm still, I think Zaya should be same side as Neela, right? Like, you really want her shred. But honestly, she's going to shred the entire front line a lot of the time, so it's probably fine. But yeah, this big giant ship is going to crash into the back line. Is that GG? That is GG. So that is a first place from Jazz Latte on this crazy, crazy comp. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Once again, check out our sponsor down below into the AM, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.